Welcome back to this week's podcast. And our reviewer of the week is Venus Birthspace. She says, hi, I absolutely love this podcast as a doula and first time mom. I started listening to this podcast when I was eight weeks pregnant. The information you share with your community is golden. This podcast has not only helped me improve my methods as a doula, but also provided me with a sense of ease and confidence during my home birth and postpartum journey. I will continue to recommend your podcast to future clients and anyone in the birth community. She gave me a thumbs up and she said it is from Shannon at Venus Taylor. So thank you, Shannon. Um, And yes, to all of you that are listening that are birth professionals too, um, thank you for following along. And I hope it really is helpful. I know as a new doula myself or new childbirth educator, um, I was just soaking up all the information. So I hope this is a place that you can find that you're able to do that as well. Um, And then obviously for moms listening, I hope you're finding everything that you need here too. Uh, This week, I have some special guests for you guys. I love that I get two of them. They are both midwives, and we're going to talk a lot about lactation too. We have um, Heather, who is a CNM and IBCLC, Heather O'Neill, and Maureen Farrell. Am I saying that right? Farrell? Yes. Okay. Who is a CLC and DEM. So midwives, lactation professionals, and really excited for today's topics that we're about to cover. Um, If you will, will you take a moment and introduce yourself, talk about kind of how you got started in your profession, how you guys met each other, all that fun stuff. Uh, Hi, so I'm Maureen. And as you said, I'm a lactation professional and um, I'm a home birth midwife exclusively. Uh, And I ended up getting started in the birthy space (laughs) of of my professional life um, through herbalism. I was attending an herbal school And I was taking like a women's reproductive health class and my teacher was a midwife and she was like, you know, I'm going to sign you up for my doula class and you're going to take it. I was like, oh, okay, sure. (laughs) That sounds fine, I guess. And then um, she was right. It fit. (laughs) And from there, I just kind of kept escalating. (laughs) I'm Heather O'Neill, and I'm super excited to be here. Um, We first met Stephanie on our podcast, and we had such a good time, so very happy to be invited onto her podcast and meet you all. But I am a certified nurse midwife, and I got my start because I was obsessed with birth as a child, thought I wanted to be an OBGYN, like everybody else who loves birth, read Spiritual Midwifery by Ina Mae Gaskins, and then saw the Ricky Lake documentary, The Business of Being Born, (laughs) got a really bad taste in my mouth about our systemic issues in obstetrics, and I saw all the midwives who were you know, always part of the grassroots movements to make sure that everyone has autonomy and birth. And just like, it was so powerful to me. And I was like, I want to be on the winning team. (laughs) I'm pretty competitive. And I was like, you know what? I want to be on the team that's actually rooting for women. Uh, So that's how I ended up in the birth space. But I was still really focused more on the medical side of things. Um, I did somehow because the medical side of things wouldn't have me because at the time that I graduated, there were no jobs. So, you know, what does anybody do? You start your own home birth business, which just um, really introduced (laughs) me to Maureen. That's kind of how we got to be friends. We met at a conference and of course we had a long conversation full of righteous indignation about all the things we wanted to fix in the system. The pandemic hit. Uh, We both work in the lactation space and we were like, you know what? We keep getting questions from people on Facebook and Instagram about breastfeeding and everyone is tight on cash. How can we provide them with a free resource to help get them through these times? Um, So we created a free podcast called the Milk Minute Podcast, and we are two and a half years old now, which is crazy. So if you're interested in over 135 episodes of lactation goodness, you can come over and visit us there at the Milk Minute. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't realize that's how your podcast got started. And I love that. I love when you're just filling a need that moms moms have. So that's really awesome. Um, so do you, Heather, I have to ask then, since you are CNM, are you exclusively home birth still? Actually, I had a baby and then I realized I couldn't be up all night for other people (laughs) if I was already up all night for myself. So I ended up selling my home birth business to another midwife who is absolutely crushing it in our area. She is now turning people away. She's having so many births. Um, So she's doing like eight a month or something like that, which is really hard. Um, So I actually have a private lactation clinic now and I solely work in the lactation space because as it turns out, there is plenty 
plenty to do in just the lactation space to support women and families. And, um, you know, we are we are very busy and we're happy to do it and help people in that way. That's really awesome. Um, for everybody listening, I'll make sure in the show notes, you'll have links to be able to reach out to Heather and Maureen, schedule a consult, um, the books that she's talking about, all of that stuff. There will be the links in the show notes. Um, so that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm super glad we've connected, honestly. Um, okay. Something that we had talked about prior to getting on here and a topic that I think is just going to serve so many women, uh, that are listening, whether, and that's whether you're listening and you're pregnant or you are a new mom or you've been breastfeeding for a minute. I think that's going to be really helpful. Um, you guys had said that there is a new mastitis protocol and I want to hear all about it. (laughs) Yeah, it's actually really um, exciting for us as lactation professionals because we finally have some good research about mastitis and clogged ducts. And before it was sort of like, well, we see what's happening on the outside. So we're just going to guess what's happening on the inside. And that doesn't really serve us, right? Will you? Uh, um, guesswork is not great. No, and sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I would love if you could share what the old protocol was and then like move into because I'm curious to know, you know, I want to be able to see those differences as well. Yeah, absolutely. So previously, we had kind of thought like all mastitis stemmed from a clogged duct, which was like, oh, your milk got thick and got stuck. So you need to massage it out and put a bunch of heat on um, and just keep pulling milk over and over and over to try to remove that. Um, Or we thought it was bacteria from outside your body that got in through like a nipple crack. Um, And, you know, previously, if you had any systemic Uh, symptoms like a fever, immediate antibiotics. So now we realize that is not what a clogged duct is at all, nor is that where the bacteria in mastitis comes from. Um, So if you have a clogged duct, it is actually just inflammation that is pressing on the sides of your milk duct. And so it's not that milk is necessarily like creating the plug, but your duct is narrowing. Um, and there's two things that can happen when you have a narrow duct, right? One is it's hard to remove that milk. So it creates a backup behind it that creates more inflammation, et cetera. And two is that, you know, just like the rest of our body, our milk ducts have bacteria in them. Um, and when we have that kind of stasis, then we can have an overgrowth of bacteria. And some people are even set up more for failure there because they're at a baseline dysbiosis. Maybe they've had a bunch of antibiotics in the past, you know, something's a little out of balance. Um, So in light of that, do you want to talk about the new treatments that we're doing, Heather? Yeah, well, first, let's talk about the treatments that we have to stop doing. So now that we know that it's all based on inflammation, we have to stop causing more inflammation, (laughs) which means... Stop doing excessive amounts of heat, vibration, aggressive massage, Epsom salt soaks apparently do not work. We have the research basically told us like, nope, that pretty much doesn't do anything. And we need to stop turning the pump up to 11 and pumping for like 45 (laughs) minutes at a time trying to remove the clog. And also quick nod to what the clog actually is, because some people are probably listening right now thinking, but I put the Epsom salt Hakka soak on and then a milk plug shot out. Girl, no, it didn't. I'll tell you what it is. It's actually a biofilm from the bacteria, which has um, basically caused the lining of your duct to shed. And it's like a mucus biofilmy plug with milk stuck to it. So it looks like milk, but it's actually like the lining that's damaged that's being sloughed off. And I hate the word sloughed. It's really gross. <laughs> um, As you're describing all of this, I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds the whole so thing's a little yeah. gross. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who's brushing their teeth right now is like, Ugh. oh, God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're brushing off biofilm when you Yes, brush you teeth. are brushing off biofilm. <laughs> and, you know, I kind of has, have started to equate this to, like, everyone has had diarrhea at some point in their life. And when you look in the toilet and you're like, ew, look at all that mucus, that is the lining of your intestines that has been damaged and has to be removed so the new lining can regrow. So, Heather, I think you just made it more gross. (laughs) I'm going to have to put a disclaimer at the front of this for all these new moms in those first 12 weeks. (laughs) Yeah, I I know. And and by the way, if your baby does suck it out and, and swallows it, it's fine. You know, so... 
I know it's disgusting, but humans, right? Like, what are you going to do? We're just animals. Yeah. So anyway, we have to stop doing all of the things that cause more inflammation, which is just going to lead to more of that gross stuff. We're treating it more now like an injury. So when we have an injury, we do ice. We do NSAIDs, which is ibuprofen. Motrin is another is the brand name of it. Um, and then we still want to feed on that breast or pump on that breast, but not aggressively. We are just removing what we can. And a lot of people do see a decrease in supply on that one side when they're pumping. And that's okay. It is what it is. We have some damage. We just need to be very gracious with our body as we kind of move through this injury. And um, within 24 hours, we kind of know which way we're going to go. So if we are feeling a little bit better the next day, good. Carry on as normal. We, we're going to keep doing the ibuprofen, keep doing the ice. We're going to actually, for the, the most exciting thing about this protocol for us crunchy nutty people is that the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine actually recommended probiotics. Hmm. So cr we have to cr we have to fix the underlying issue that caused the inflammation in the first place, which is a dysbiosis. So we have to fix the issue of dysbiosis and possibly hyperlactation. So if you are pumping above and beyond what your baby actually eats in a day, your ducks are working triple time, quadruple time, and they're not happy doing that. So we have to kind of fix that, maybe correct your oversupply by working with a lactation professional like Maureen and I or anyone in your local area um, so we can kind of calm the system down and get it back to homeostasis. Yeah, and really, um, ABM is now taking a very conservative look at antibiotics, realizing that we've just been way over prescribing. Um, and it, it's really refreshing to see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, because previously, they basically said almost every case of mastitis needs this in order to resolve. Yeah. Um, and so, it, it, and I, I don't know about you, Heather, but personally in practice, I've seen this new protocol work really well. Um, just had somebody this week who day one, you know, had a fever and had flu-like symptoms. And I was like, okay, we're going to do the ibuprofen and ice and you're going to go to bed. And it was a slow improvement, but absolute full recovery by day three, no antibiotics needed. I was really impressed. Yeah, I have, I have to say, I've seen the same except for one case. And this patient was an exclusive pumper, a natural oversupplier. We did what we could to correct it. I even did ultrasound treatments. So that is one of the treatments mm -hmm. listed on the uh, new protocol. Um, so you can actually get a, an ultrasound treatment, which actually feels kind of nice and it's warm. It's not like the ultrasound yeah. picture where we're looking in there. It's ultras ultrasound waves that we're sending through, which promote healing and decrease inflammation. Um, and they're very low intervention, which I'm all about that life. So um, in this case, we did end up doing antibiotics and um, it did work. And it actually corrected her oversupply, but now we're kind of lying in wait because anytime you do antibiotics, you're potentially contributing to more dysbiosis. So we're kind of in the gray area of like, okay, are we fine or are we not fine? And But that's one case out of probably 10 that I've had since this uh, new protocol came out. So we'll see. Yeah, I love that you guys are sharing that. And it's um, funny, ironic, I don't know, but I'm I'm with you. There was something that told me early on that I don't need antibiotics every time I start feeling that way from mastitis. And so the very first time I got it, and this is what I have shared with people that I teach and even within my birth course now, um, antibiotics are there as kind of like a last resort. And you guys can tell me what you think in regards to what I have been recommending, which of course I'm gonna add this information to that. Um, um, but the interesting thing about mastitis and you're talking about it being bacteria and infection is when you get mastitis. So yes, your breast hurts. It feels, you can feel the clog. There's warmth, maybe like some redness there. Uh, but you also get those, like, I feel like I have the flu or like, I, you know, I like have the headache and I've got the fever and I have the chills. Like I don't feel good. And instantly I'm like, okay, well, what do I do in this situation? I'm going to move off of sugar and dairy and which are things that you're saying are inflammatory. I recommend, I'm like, I start my honey tea that has apple cider vinegar in it. I start, I'll chew like a clove of garlic with some honey um, morning and night. And, um, and then I'm drinking tons of water and taking vitamin C. And that 
protocol, what just that little bit of what I do had worked for me every single time those things came on. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to share that with everybody I know, because I think there are there's negative side effects to taking a bunch of antibiotics, you know, especially if you don't necessarily need them. So um, I don't know, maybe you guys have some comments about what I've been sharing, whether that's like a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and I love that you're sharing like, you know, the the ibuprofen and the icing and because on the other side of things, I I don't know that I was necessarily doing heat, but I do say, and it did feel at least good for me when you're talking about this stuff they're sloughing off. Now I'm not going to be able to get that out of my head. But I, I do always <laughs> say, you know, like when you have that like clogged duct, like I was always told, have your baby nursing with their chin, like the direction of that duct. And so sometimes that would be like my baby's on the bed turned and I'm leaning over with my breast in whichever position is going to aim that clogged duct towards their chin. So they're getting that nice suck. And it would feel good when it sloughed off now, as I know, you know, kind of like pop through. You're like, ah, like something happened and that feels better. Um, <laughs> so anyways, now now with my, you know, minimal information, you guys can share if that's a good idea or a bad idea. <clears throat> so the new protocol actually says that there's no evidence that dangle feeding works. However, okay. however, we have a bunch of lymph nodes in our armpits. And often when we have engorgement or inflammation of any kind, kind of taking the pressure by gathering the breast up with your hands, even like laying on your back and having your partner grab your breast with their hands and kind of like lifting it over the chest and just kind of holding it there really opens up those channels. And sometimes you can feel that inflammation kind of drain out and then just feed your baby as normal. Um, you should feed your baby in any way that it feels good to you, though. So, you know, just because we don't have good research that says that dangle feeding works, if you want to dangle feed and that's your prerogative and your baby loves it and it's going to be a good time feed, then do it. Um, but I'm going to actually punt this over to Maureen to talk about which bacteria is causing which symptoms, because I think this is fascinating. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Well, I do want to take a note on your kind of general recommendations. Um, those are great. You know, if, if people have the ability and resources to like step back from pro-inflammatory foods um, and they have the ability to stay home and rest, absolutely, they should do that. Um, something else that I tell people, especially when that's not possible, when they're like, I'm a nurse, I have a 13 hour shift coming up. No way can I go home not have dairy and like lay down. Um, what I tell people then is like, okay, do your best. And also, why don't you get that prescription filled for antibiotics? Because when you need it, it's going to be a Sunday mm. night at 2 a.m. <laughs> so true. Nobody's going to be there. <laughs> so you don't have to take it. You can get it filled. You can put it in your cabinet and it's there if you need it. If we feel like things have escalated to a point um, where our current method is not working to help. Yeah, that's really smart. I'm glad yeah. that you shared that. And I think I, I'm definitely going to, um, to bring that up or, and share this a little differently the way that I share that. I think that's really wise because yeah. you're absolutely right. And I've been there. How many of us have, you know, you're totally well, right. That's and also yeah. it, it really just highlights the lack of access to care that we have. You know, if we had a system that supported us in a timely manner where we weren't made to feel a certain way, like, oh, you're breastfeeding, you shouldn't be having any medication or like you see it, no offense, but like a first year resident who has no clue what they're doing <laughs> in general. And they're just kind of like, uh, I'm not really sure you should even take antibiotics or they give you the wrong antibiotics or or anything like that. So, you know, making sure that if it's a good time for you, yes, get the good, get the antibiotics that you need, hang on to them and then be in touch with that provider, which is why Maureen and I love collaborating because I can prescribe and I'm happy always to collaborate with other people. And thanks to the pandemic, I never thought we'd say that, but um, we can prescribe over state lines now to kind of correct this access to care issue that we're having. So, um, you know, use the resources that you have and, um, yeah, let's talk about the funny little bacteria guys in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't have my specific notes in front of me, so correct me if I'm not <laughs> remembering right, Heather. But um, most of the time what we're seeing, and we have kind of known this, is that staff is like the, the criminal here. <laughs> um, it's the bacteria that causes those biofilms. We, uh, staff loves to cause a biofilm. It just loves it. Um, but staff lives in our body. 
naturally, you know, it's, it's not um, automatically pathogenic. Uh, but the interesting thing is that just having the inflammatory response locally in the breast can cause a systemic response that mimics an infection. So that's actually what is then causing those flu-like symptoms, body aches, fever, and not necessarily because we suddenly have a systemic infection. Well, you know, we have this beautiful ecosystem of bacteria living together, mostly harmoniously all the time. Um, But the interesting thing about staph is that staph is not the culprit for the systemic stuff. Staph does not, staph causes like the swelling in the specific duct, which is why some people Mm -hmm. are like, oh, I've got a plugged duct and and you're like, how do you feel? And they're like, I feel fine, except it hurts over here by my armpit. Um, so that's staph, most likely, that's causing the heat, the redness, the plug. Yeah. There are other bacteria with names that I cannot pronounce that actually, <laughs> when they get too prolific, they have a toxin that's released. Mm-hmm. And that toxin is yeah. what our body is responding to systemically. So that's where we get the fever, the chills, the flu-like symptoms, the malaise. Um, so that's not necessarily staph. That does not mean that staph is not also in play. Um, I think they do go hand in hand a lot. But, you know, what we're saying is don't ignore it and think that it's not a real mastitis if you don't have a fever. Um, It's really inflammatory mastitis is what we're calling it. So first it's inflammatory mastitis, which could be either systemic or the hardened area. And then it could move to a bacterial mastitis or it could morph depending on how your body reacts to it. Um, some people's bodies love to wall things off. It sees a foreign invader and it goes, mm-hmm. okay, I shall wall this off. And then we <laughs> end up with either a galactosile, which is like a collection of milk in a ball, usually near the areola. Or we have a phlegmon, which is just disgusting <laughs> sounding. Or we have a full abscess. Yeah. And so if you... And, you know, I just have to say, I have a real problem with people's bodies who respond this way. I'm yeah. like, come on, you didn't have to do this. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> because that <laughs> that really can make treatment a little bit complicated because then often we have to actually go to that site and drain that out, right? Because their body is not necessarily going to reabsorb whatever's in that pocket of fluid. But interestingly enough, um, Of course, also the protocol for treating this has changed too. Um, And in the past, you know, we'd send people in when these pockets of fluid got big enough um, to get them drained, aspirated with a giant needle that is terrifying. Um, And for most people, they come back. And so we'd send them over and over and over again to get stuck with a huge needle and get that stuck stuff um, pulled out. So now for a lot of that, ABM is recommending putting in a gravity drain at that first contact for drainage. Um, So leaving a tube in there essentially to let it keep draining out. Um, And then that helps people prevent those repeated aspirations, which are just causing more trauma and more inflammation. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, For those of you who that are listening to, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the episode, but Maureen and Heather have actually provided a free PDF download where they're talking about plug duct and mastitis protocols, right? Do you want to talk about just that just for a moment? And then I'll make sure that that's in the show notes um, for everybody to be able to download as well. Yeah, actually, I have to give all the credit to Maureen on that beautiful PDF because (laughs) in her free time that she definitely doesn't have since she's got two kids and she runs a home birth business and she does this crazy podcast with me, she's also a bit of an amazing graphic designer. And so she put together this beautiful graphic. Please share it on all of your platforms because uh, we have to get the word out about this. This is not really something that has been a huge like marketing push by the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine. They're like, here's the new protocol. And it's really up to us to make sure the information is disseminated. So you all can actually be a part of this by sharing it. And we would greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, Because you know, there's going to be someone listening to this at two o'clock in the morning, (laughs) with a hard spot on their boob getting ready to aggressively massage it. And who knows, maybe the graphic pops up thanks to you. Um, So yeah, that is pretty cool. And I just wanted to also mention this 
applies to blebs also. So nipple blebs are mm-hmm. also from ductal inflammation. So we do not unroof. It's called unroofing. We do not unroof the bleb. It's when you scrape it with a needle that you think you've probably tried to sterilize. Right. We're not taking that sewing needle with a lighter in your bathroom and <laughs> sanitizing it and sticking yourself in the white tip, the white bleb on your nipple. Please don't do that. And don't let Kate, a provider you're do have that to either. Describe nipple blebs for women listening. Cause I am like, let's hear it. <laughs> it's been so fun having you describe things, Heather. Please go again. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Strap in, everybody. It's going to get gross. <laughs> so sometimes um, we have the bacteria, depending on where it is, right? Like you could have a really, really deep plug, plug, quote unquote, inflammatory response in the back of your breast at like a really lower segment lobe. Or you could have this inflammatory response closer to the nipple area. And your body does not like this inflammation and will, like I said, wall it off. But sometimes that literally means your body grows like a skin blanket over the port of your nipple where the milk should be coming out of your nipples. So your body's like, I know how to take care of this. Insert skin blanket. And so the milk keeps trying to come through it. And it looks like this bubbled up, extremely painful white spot on the tip of your nipple. And it looks like a white head that should be popped on your face. But it is not. (laughs) It is not. And sometimes you can just kind of gently apply coconut oil, which can soften the skin that has kind of grown over it. Um, We like to do moist wound healing. So your nipples really want to be um, in in a happy environment. And coconut oil is also really antimicrobial, which is super nice to use. Um, so that's basically what a nipple blub is. Please don't pop it. Please don't stick a needle in it. Um, same protocol applies. We're going to do, except add coconut oil, the ibuprofen, the ice, all of that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's You're awesome. welcome. <laughs> um, all right. I, I would love for everybody to know exactly where to find you. So if you will give me all of your website information, Instagram or social media, you know, contact, all of that stuff. And then again, I will have that in the show notes in the email that goes out this week too. Yeah, you can find um, everything we do at milkminutepodcast.com. Very simple um, transcripts. You can listen to episodes there, all the extras, links for everything else. Um, we are on Instagram and TikTok at milk underscore minute underscore podcast. Um, and then you can find us on Facebook at the Milk Minute Podcast. You can email us at milkminutepodcast at gmail.com. And we love to answer your emails. Um, and we have a Patreon as well. And um, we just, we, we pretty much talk to our patrons daily. <laughs> they have like messaging access with us, um, bonus episodes, things like that. So, And also, if you wanted to book a private lactation consult with Maureen or I, Maureen is at highlandbirth.com. Right, Maureen? Mm-hmm. And, Highland Birth Support. Oh, Highland Birth yeah. Support.com. And I am at breastfeedingforbusymoms.com. I do accept some insurance and we can do telehealth. So, um, you know, don't be struggling by yourself. You know, this is not really a situation where you want to be a martyr to pain. Um, this is not part of motherhood. It should not feel like this. This is not what you signed up for. Like this is where you outsource and you get some help and we love it. We're obsessed with it, obviously. So we're happy to help you any way we can. Yeah. I'm grateful that these listeners are going to have some access to you guys. I'm with you. If there's some good that we can have that came from 2020, it's things like being able to meet with people over state lines and online. And I feel like um, there was kind of like even this like forcefully you have to figure out how to treat people over, you know, online and not being with them. Uh, it was not I'm an sure. easy transition. <laughs> but I assume with some practice, you guys have probably gotten pretty good at it. And so that's such a benefit to women everywhere. So anyways, thank you for being here. Thank you for your expertise and um, for your time. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And you have some very lucky listeners. You've got a great show.